For the dinner to build up to its climax, I suggest a delicate and light appetizer with a final surprise that will add an unexpected touch to the first part of the evening, giving guests an idea of what should be an intense main course. Kathy, it's delicious. Thanks, Pauline. It's a cake cod red mullet with popitos and cabbage ravioli and Vermont pig ear. All drizzled with an anchovy vinaigrette. Uh, are you okay? You don't look so good. I don't? Oh, well, I have a bit of a headache. It's nothing, really. Nothing that a dinner like this one can't cure. Although, one diazepam can work wonders. Would you like me to bring you one? Oh, no thanks, Trav. I'm off chemical stuff. Right now I'm into homeopathy and Bach flowers. I highly recommend it. Placebos just don't work for me. They give me anxiety. Once Catherine took me to a homeopath to quit my antidepressant addiction. After one week of just sucking onto small balls, the same homeopath wrote me a prescription for a stronger antidepressant. It was awful, although he might have had a worse time than I did. Trevor, don't start. We all know that story. The only thing I like about ball flowers is that they have brandy in them. Hey, Trev, how's that screenplay going? You know, I'm dying to read it. Well, Michael, you're going to have to wait. Right now, my time is devoted to teaching my history cinema class. It's a heroic mission in life to make my students understand that a black and white film is not due to a defective projector. You and the classics. Talking about movies, have you seen the latest last uh, one? How about film? we make a toast? <laughs> Great idea. Perfect timing. Great. I believe it's my turn. Here's to Michael, who has given me a unique opportunity by getting me in touch with the editors at the New York Times. If everything goes as planned, my lovely and humble cooking blog will become a regular feature for the Times. To Michael for getting me closer to my dream. Oh, and also to the four of us for proving that sincere and long-lasting friendships can survive well into our 40s. Are you expecting someone? No, it must be a mistake. I'll go check. Jerry! Well, you're all here. Only Victoria's absent. Though, I don't believe she'll be coming. Right, Catherine? What about you, Michael? Please don't get up. Keep on doing what you were doing. It won't bother you if I smoke while you guys eat dinner. I'd rather you not smoke in here. You know, Trevor has asthma. Jerry, so great to see you. Why don't you join us? You know Catherine. She's cooked for at least five or six unexpected guests. Kathy, go bring another plate, will you? Finally, we reach the eagerly awaited main course. It's the moment of truth. When dealing with good friends, I would advise you to be daring with the flavors. Start with a sharp tune, but don't be afraid of a conflicting flavor. One that might leave guests with a bitter taste in their mouths. Amazing, Catherine. You outdid yourself tonight. Next week, she'll be cooking for the New York Times food editors. Michael got her in touch with them. Well, Michael, you don't waste your time with the sisters. Jerry, please, you're drunk. That's why tonight I will do without hypocrisy and fuss. Catherine deserves the opportunity. She's talented and hardworking. And Victoria, who lacks talent and doesn't work as hard. Hmm. What opportunities have you given her? It's been a long time since I last saw Victoria. Can we change the subject? No! Am I missing something? What does Victoria have to do with all of this? Ugh, Jerry. You are still upset about what happened with Victoria. You have to get over it. You have to understand that Catherine can't invite both of you. It would be uncomfortable. Dear Pauline, it's you who doesn't get it. What do you mean? So, Michael, it's really been that long since you saw Victoria? Michael, what does he mean by that? Have you seen Victoria lately? Oh, come on, Pauline. Wake up. Victoria left me because she was involved with Michael. What? How do you know? Michael, is it true? All of us knew about it, except like always, naive and poor Pauline. 
Hold on, hold on. Don't drag us into this. I wasn't aware of it, and neither was Kathy. Right, Kathy? Catherine! You knew your sister and your best friend's husband were sleeping together, and you said nothing about it? We're not sleeping together. It was just a damn fling. Please, I haven't seen her for the last month. Shut up! Yes, I knew. Victoria told me, and of course I got upset. I gave her a piece of my mind, and I threw her out of my house. She's a conniving bitch. She's always been one. She had a great teacher. What about Michael? You've kept in touch with him all this time. Fully aware of... Hold on. Is this because of the New York Times? Well, Trevor, welcome to reality. Your wife is a disgusting, ambitious bitch. Well, I just couldn't let an opportunity like this go by. Oh my gosh, how could you? Anyone got a tranquilizer handy? The truth of the matter is, where on earth is Victoria? If Catherine threw her out, and Michael hasn't seen her for the last month, and she doesn't answer my calls, does anyone know what she's up to?